This is the Ken Sparks Show. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, joined by the head coach of Carson Newman's football team, head coach Ken Sparks. And Coach Sparks, as you can see, the saying, <laughs> it gets foggy down at Mossy Creek, at least today, very much true. Yeah, you, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to know the fog is still alive and well around here. So uh, we, we'll use this next ball game, maybe. Beautiful morning, and we recap a 56-46 victory for your Eagles and your 300th career victory. First off, Coach, congratulations. Well, thank you, Adam. We had a group of kids that uh, uh, wanted to win a ball game. Uh, we had a whole bunch of guys. That's the first college playing that they'd ever done, and it showed up. We uh, uh, Right off the bat, we got two or three guys uh, on defensive side that uh, – uh, had difficulties of, uh, you know, we'd had a little bit of off-season surgery, uh, off-season injuries, and uh, not a little bit, but a whole bunch. And so some of them were still in the get better stage, uh, and so conditions showed up pretty good last night. It was humid, uh, <clears throat> and so consequently we uh, uh, we got uh, uh, our second half wasn't as good as the first half. You're now one of 11 coaches with 300 career victories, and you've talked about it leading up all week that you wouldn't be here without the players and your coaches who've helped you throughout the years. You've said that 300 doesn't mean any more or less than 299, but what's it mean to have the support of great coaches and great players for now 33 years? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's the blessing of life, you know, how in the world, uh, you know, to, to join with a group of kids at... Uh, uh, that have bought into the system, have bought into the fact that they uh, they want to be significant players in in, in life, and uh, they just didn't want to be uh, survivors or even successful, but they wanted to be significant. And uh, uh, boy, I tell you, some of the success stories uh, that we have of, of guys who've been through the laboratory of learning called Carson Newman football, uh, you know, has been uh, it's an unbelievable. Uh, uh, I, I, I hate to use the word legacy, but it's an unbelievable uh, uh, mission field of what these guys are doing out there. And so I, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just grateful that the, the, the fact that uh, so many of them uh, gave of themselves to this and uh, players and coaches and bought into it and, and made it a lot better and, and uh, and they're the secret to the whole thing. And and what they're doing now, the ripple effect from what they're doing now, you know, because of this experience or a whole lot because of this experience. You know, a lot of them found a relationship with Christ uh, through this experience. And so, uh, unbelievable. It's, I mean, it's been unbelievable. Final score, 56 to 46 over the West Virginia Intercollegiate Athletic Conference's Glenville State. This is the Ken Sparks Show. We'll be back with more of the head coach of the Carson Newman Eagles after this. Back on the Ken Sparks Show, I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. Carson Newman victorious over Glenville State Thursday night, 56-46. to And something new, Coach, that we're going to be doing on the Ken Sparks Show this year, we're going to be doing some interactivity. So if you have a question for Coach after a game, get on Facebook and see in Athletics, the Facebook page, or on Twitter, at see in Athletics, or at Cav on the call, that's my Twitter account. Send us a tweet, send us a comment on Facebook, and ask a question to the coach. And we've done that last night. And coach, your 300th career victory. They gotta be easy questions uh, I, now. I'm, you've gotta this, remember this one, I'm a coach. This one might throw a curveball for you. <laughs> uh -oh. Josh and Missy would like to know out of your 300 career victories, which one was the most memorable? <laughs> Probably the first national championship, uh, uh, 1983. We went to Colorado played uh, Mesa State, Colorado, and they were heavily favored uh, to win the ball game. They were runners up from the year before. They had everybody back. We were playing at their home field. There was uh, 10,000 uh, some drunks uh, that were throwing bottles and it snowed and they were throwing snowballs at us. It was, it was really, really an interesting trip and to see how our guys responded. Uh, and uh, you know, we'd lost three games that year. And we just barely got into playoffs. And then for us to win a national championship was, uh, was pretty exciting. Well, victory number 300 starts out with a bang. Last year against Glenville State, the turnover bug 
caught you early. Turnovers on three of your first four drives. This time, your first at Glenville State tur turnover, get a short field, and Solomon Dewan ends up taking it in for a score. How important was that first fumble? Well, I think it was critical to get off to a good start. And, uh, you know, the 35-14 at halftime, uh, defense had scored, the defense had uh, forced uh, a couple of turnovers. Uh, the kicking game was was functioning well. The offense, uh, I don't believe we punted the first half. And uh, so, you know, it was uh, it was a good half of football and we were excited about the first half. You bring up the fumble recovery for a score. Jacob Coleman, not only with the forced fumble, but also with the fumble recovery, the scoop and score. What sort of job did he do as one of your leading returning tacklers and starter at, at linebacker? But Jacob is a, uh, he's a ball hawk. Uh, he, He's he's a good ball skilled person, and uh, it's not that's not his first rodeo. That's not the first time he's taken it to the house, and so uh, and he's pretty special. You you go through it and <clears throat> you score on four straight possessions, bridging the first and second quarter. What was the offense doing to be clicking so well uh, there at the midpoint in the first half? Well, we were coming off the ball well. Uh, you know, anytime you you. Uh, uh, are successful offensively, it means you probably got a, a front five that's pushing the line of scrimmage pretty good and coming off the ball. And then uh, we had backs running hard, and it was a good it was a it was a good total team function uh, the first half. We look at the first half highlights. Carson Newman with the lead at the break, 35 to 14 over Glenville State. Ball on the far hash. First and five, handoff out of the shotgun, goes up the gut to Lee. Lee squirts forward, but loses the football. Lee coughed it up at the 40, it bounces up to the 44, where it's pounced on by a Carson Newman defender. Seventh play of the drive coming up, 10.45 left. First quarter, handoff goes up the middle. Solomon Dewana, Dewana across the two, the one, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. The Eagles dent the scoreboard first as Solomon Dewana skates in from four yards out. To his left, two wide ends up top, a lone man, the short side left, snap, back to Hughes, looks left, now dashes right, Hughes in trouble. Hughes looking to the back right corner of the end zone, throws, caught on the right side of the end zone, it's complete. Three, and off, up the middle to Baker, Baker, sensational juke move at the 42, Baker with the Jets, the 10, the five, touchdown, Carson Newman, Brandon Baker makes a house call from 61 yards out, and Carson Newman retakes the lead, 13 to seven with 12:43 left in the second quarter. In the backfield now, first time we've seen that from the pioneer today. Using the gun, three-step drop, throws over the middle, complete has Harris, and Harris is upended by Carson Newman defender. Fumble on the play, it's Jacob Coleman. He picked it up to, at the 40. Coleman weaving his way across the field. Coleman will take it the distance. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Jacob Coleman forced the fumble and then got the scoop and score. And the Eagles are on top, 20 to seven. Eagles with a 14 point lead, searching to add with 7.44 before the first half comes out. Look back here for the Eagles. Haywood under center. Douglas to the left, Baker to the right. Haywood back to pass. Throws complete over the middle of the field to Brown on the 40. Brown with speed across the 45. Brown turning on the Jets at the 25 and 20. Brown will go all the way down the far sideline. Touchdown, Carson Newman. 69 yards for the score for Jason Brown. Seconds remaining before the half lets out. Carson Newman 28, Glenville State 14. Split back here for the Eagles. Douglas to the left, Baker to the right. Haywood runs right, hands off to Baker. Baker spinning his way on top of the pile and he winds up in the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Those your first half highlights. Carson Newman, the lead at the break, 35-14 over Glenville State. Coach, you go through, you hold Glenville State 52 yards passing as an aerial assault team in that first half. What was the key defensively? Well, I think, uh, you know, first the, the first thing was is that the offense stayed on the field. That, that helped a whole lot. <laughs> uh, the second thing was was that we were getting some pass rush and getting some pressure on the quarterback. And I think the, but the most important thing was we were playing good assignment football and, and, uh, and I think, uh, you know, we just had uh, 
the, the back part of the defense was was doing a good job so that the front part could, and the front part was doing a good job so the back part could. And so, you know, it, they all work together. Offensively, <laughs> you get some players in space, and they score from a ways away. Uh, Brown picks up a 69-yard catch and run. Baker, from 60 yards out, takes it to the house along the right side. Uh, what were the keys getting those plays rolling? Well, the, well it, it, you know, the key is when you got the ball, go score. You know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and I know that's not uh, uh, that's not uh, on the doctorate level as far as coaching is concerned. But that's uh, uh, if you got players that when they get their ball in the hand, they know where the goal line is. That sort of certainly helps. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, Jason can run. Uh, uh, Brandon is not as fast as Jason, but Brandon was unbelievable as far as his determination and as far as uh, uh, making the effort to uh, made two or three open field moves that were outstanding. And so, uh, uh, good good job. Of course, Brandon and Jason, either one can get it done if we don't protect the passer and if we don't throw it and if we don't get a couple blocks downfield and et cetera, et cetera. So it's a it's a team deal. Well, we'll recap the sec second half after this. This is the Ken Spark Show. the Ken Sparks Show. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside the head coach of Carson Newman's Eagles, Ken Sparks, fresh off his 300th career victory thanks to a 56-46 victory over Glenville State. At the half, it was 35-14. Coach, what happened in the locker room? What was discussed at halftime? Well, uh, defensive and offensive coaches made uh, some good adjustments. Uh, I, I certainly wasn't comfortable at halftime, uh, even though we had a three-touchdown lead. And, and don't get me wrong, Three touchdown leads better than it being alt and alt, you know. But uh, but but I knew that we had uh, that they had helped us a lot the first half, and uh, and I also in the locker room saw a lot of tired people, and uh, so and and then two or three people that I knew weren't going to play the second half, and that was scary, and uh, especially when two or three of those people were, was probably you know some pass rushing ability, and uh, so. That uh, I, I was very uncomfortable at halftime and expressed to them that we need to come out the first five minutes of the second half. And sure enough, we took the second half kickoff and went down and scored. And, and, then, and then it went this way a little bit at them. And, uh, and that's the thing that concerns me. And, and uh, we, we did not, uh, from that point on, we weren't a very good football team. Glenville State <laughs> scores on its first five possessions of the second half, scores on five of six, 26 unanswered points. What were the Pioneers doing, or and how much of it was Carson Newman that caused that? Well, they've got some good skilled people. Uh, you know, they've, uh, they've got a whole lot of Division One transfers. they got some people that can play. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and we, uh, we, we, we took a little bit of a backward step uh, at that time. We offensively, I knew we needed to continue to put points on the board because of uh, the fact that we were uh, stretched uh, pretty good on defense as far as getting the people on the field that we wanted to get on the field. And uh, so uh, when the offense uh, went through their little uh, void area there of not getting points on the board for about three or four possessions, then it really bothered me. And, uh, and, and most of it was our execution. We had a tight end open on the pass, wide open, that would have been six. We had a uh, you know, we had what back-to-back -back turnovers, I think, in that in that stage too. So that wasn't good. wasn't good at all. Back-to-back -back turnovers, but you also <coughs> possessed the ball for 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. What did you do to keep the football and grind down the clock? Well, we uh, we told those guys up front we was going to saddle them up and, and hook on, and uh, and that's what we did, and and really challenged uh, uh, running backs. Uh, and boy, they were running hard and. Uh, Tyron uh, ran hard. He's a gutsy kid. Uh, uh, Brandon ran hard and, and got some things done just because we were asking him to. And uh, so, uh, and we got a couple of good runs out of Andy Hibbett and and uh, and I thought uh, uh, I thought O Solo Solomon Dewana did a good job for his first collegiate start. So uh, it was it was overall good. We'll take a look at the second half highlights here on the Ken Sparks Show. 
himself. Hey, great game. Haywood hands off up the middle. No, kept it himself. Haywood faked the handoff to Baker. Jets around the right guard and scoots into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Brandon Haywood finds his way in from five yards out. Shotgun formation for Hughes. Pray to his left. Three wide outs to the wide side right. Hughes back to pass. Throws left complete at the goal line to his wide receiver, Giles. Giles makes one step to his right and scoots into the end zone. Touchdown, Glenville State. Trying to add on to a 21 point lead. Split back beer, Haywood under center, hands off left side, Baker. Baker goes on the trap right side. Baker dashing down the far hash marks. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Brandon Baker with the hat trick. The wide side left, the lone man correctly comes to the short side right. Snap, back to Hughes. Carson Newman blitzes. Hughes gets it loose, throws it complete over the middle of the field. Touchdown, Glenville. Orlandis Harris. Hughes at the gun on second and eight. McCray to his left. Hughes, three-step drop, back to pass. Looking right, rolling right. Hughes firing across his body into the end zone. Complete touchdown, Glenville. Orlandis Harris, first and goal from the six. Haywood on the keeper. He takes off up the middle and scores. Touchdown, Carson Newman. That should be all she wrote as Brandon Haywood scores six from six yards out right up the gut. Shotgun, the crowd on its feet in anticipation of 300. 3.6 seconds left. 56-46, Carson Newman. Snap back to Hughes, final play. Lofts it up near his side to Cleckley. In and out of his hands, incomplete. Final score, Carson Newman 56, Glenville State 46. And as sure as it gets foggy down at Mossy Creek, you can be sure Ken Sparks has career victory 300. Those are your second half highlights. Final score, Carson Newman 56, Glenville State 46. Ken Sparks, his 300th career victory. We'll be back to talk about Carson Newman's next game against Lenore Ryan after this. This is the Ken Sparks Show. Carson Newman, final over Glenville State, 56 to 46. Thursday night, and it certainly is foggy here at Mossy Creek. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside head coach Ken Sparks. Coach, you, you talk about an environment for your 300th career victory. The Mossy Creek Maniacs were up and about. People were on their feet the entirety of the fourth quarter. What did that do for your team? Well, I thought it helped. Uh, I, you know, there wasn't any question. It was a great crowd, and uh, and they were loud, and and, uh, and they were so loud. There was times when when I couldn't communicate with the players like I normally do, and so uh, it was a great environment. Uh, fireworks at the end. Uh, uh, crowd come down on the field. Uh, it was it was tremendous environment, and uh, I, uh, it was one of those uh, you know some of these kids don't realize, but that was one of those lifetime experiences in a lot of ways, and uh, just to see the reaction of people B blesses you a little bit. <clears throat> oh no question, it was a tremendous blessing, and you know the Lord's been at them in so many different ways as. Uh, uh, has proven himself uh, to be strong in my life, and I'm just grateful uh, just to be a, uh, one of those pieces of old clay that I hope that he <laughs> continues to mold and work with, you know. Yeah, we, we touched on it earlier, and I, and I sort of want to revisit <clears throat> it. You've always kept the same mantra, God has always been in your life throughout your coaching career. That's been a constant for you. How have you changed, though, as a head coach? Now 300 wins into your career, 33 years into your career? Well, I used to run with them all the time, <laughs> and I'm running less with them now. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, life changes, and kids change, and uh, society changes. Uh, our cultural influences are constantly trying to cause us to be something that probably that we don't need to be. And uh, so, uh, you know, you need to stay on the cutting edge as far as communicating with them. Uh, you've got to, uh, you know, you've got to be able to connect. But, but the thing that doesn't change, uh, blocking is still blocking, and tackling is still tackling, and uh, 
And you know, uh, truth doesn't change, Adam. Uh, you know, God's got His word uh, that He's that He honors, uh, and those of us who believe it and operate on on truth and do what's right and try to keep from doing what's wrong. And I think He, he He's involved in that. And uh, so. Uh, those principles never change. Uh, methods change, principles don't, and that's a good thing. We gotta hang on to principles. You look at it. You get a week off after the <laughs> first week of the season. Thank, the... You, thank you, Lord. We need a week <laughs> off. It, how how important is this bye week? Turn around September fifteenth. Lenore Ryan comes to town. Well, uh, Lenore Ryan's uh, you know creates a whole lot different set of problems than Glenville did, and. Uh, uh, and so, you know, we've got to get a whole lot better with the blocking and tackling. And, uh, you know, I normally do not like open dates after the first ball game. Uh, but this time I'm grateful for an open date. And uh, we've got a whole lot of things to get accomplished. And, uh, uh, you know, we won't, uh, we won't beat them to death, but we got to get into, into, into doing a whole lot better job than we did this week. And hopefully get some people a little bit better well so we can get some people on the field we didn't have on the field this ball game. Lenore Ryan, the preseason favorite. <laughs> the Bears ranked as high as 23rd in one poll, uh, receiving votes 26th in another. How challenging is it to prepare for their offense? Well, it's real challenging. They're, they're a wean bone where they, uh, and they've got a big transfer fullback from Navy, and, you know, and they're, they're very, very capable. I think they got 19 starters back, and uh, so, you know, they're going to be a good football team. Uh, and uh, you know we beat them 30 straight years. Now they beat us too, and, uh, and I guess uh, you know it's time, uh, hopefully, to, to get change those streaks around. You, you look at your career. There aren't too many times <laughs> when you've been beaten by the same team two years running. Is, is there a chip on this team's shoulder to play against Lenore Ryan? Oh, I, Adam, I don't know about those chips. I, I'm not too interested in those chips. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in us uh, just being the kind of people we need to be and, and playing the kind of football that would, uh, uh, that would make us proud and make the Lord proud. And so that's, that's what we're trying to do. And yeah. Coach Sparks, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining me. Well, Adam, thank you for being in the fog with me this morning. And I hope that, I hope you don't. I hope that's not literal that we're in the fog. Uh, <laughs> after your 300th career victory, I think I don't think there's any mental fog. Coach, always a pleasure. <laughs> thank you, man. Carson Newman, head football coach Ken Sparks for our producer Glenn Cragwall. I'm Adam Cavalier. Thanks for watching. <laughs>